It's a big week for pomp and circumstance in this country, but this evening we have a sporting coronation as we crown this year's King of the Crucible. This is the ultimate crown jewel in snooker, and the name of Englishman Mark Selby appears on it already four times. But if you look down the list of world champions, you'll see that there are only three from outside the United Kingdom. Canada's Cliff Thorburn, Ireland's Ken Doherty, and Neil Robertson of Australia. But tonight, could Luca Brussel of Belgium be next? He's certainly looking good as the heir apparent. As our Titans resumed, it was Brussel who found the early footing, stamping his authority once again. Errors from Selby as the Belgian bullet found his mark. Cannon fire. Luca looked confident, moving three up. Yesterday's history maker continued to stumble. Brussel blossomed on the bays. He moved four ahead in absolute style. As the interval loomed, the former champion couldn't find his groove. Another one. And Brussel looked on fire. It's third. Sentry in four frames. Mark Selby really has no answer. Cometh the hour, cometh the man. But experience doesn't bow down easily, and Selby rallied. Wonderful shot. Brussel battled back in the next frame, but lost a 41 point lead. Oh, now then. Selby, patient and accurate, pounced. That's right in the centre of the pocket. But Luca bit back. Century number four in this final. As the afternoon drew to its conclusion, the underdog continued to amaze. That is about the best he could do from there. Denying Selby any momentum. In. What a break! Is there a way back for the four-time champion? So your final walk to the Crucible. Your last chance to breathe in a bit of fresh air and make the most of it because it's claustrophobic inside. And the only thing in your mind when you walk into the stage door? Just get in easily. I don't want to do any autographs, not before, wait till afterwards. No autographs, just let me in the building so I can find my dressing room and the practice table. We're minutes away from the players walking out for the final session. The nerves are jangling, but you know, this practice room is a bit of sanctuary for the players. It's where they can relax, do the thing they know best, and just chill out, turn their arm over just before they walk out for the nerve jangling last session. So, final practice done, no more fine tuning possible. As you walk past backstage, you may hear Rob Walker whipping the crowd up into a frenzy. It's the climax of the Kazoo World Super Championship. So you go to your dressing room for a couple of minutes, just for a bit of peace and quiet, and prepare for the onslaught that is ahead. It's at this point, when all the nerves and the butterflies in your stomach just evaporate and you can concentrate on doing the job you know so well, just be a snooker player.
This is the holding area, the final place where you can be a normal person before you have to turn in to a superhero. I don't know about you, but the waiting for a final session is the worst, isn't it? I, I don't know, I just felt nauseous. I would, uh, you know, you almost feel like you're going to be physically sick. You just want to get out there and get a cue in your hand and just play snooker. What do you reckon? A new name down there or an old one? I can't wait to find out. Well, the only way to find out is to hear the sound of Rob Walker's voice. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Belgium's Luca Bracel. <laughs> to the four-time world champion, the one and only, Mark Selby! So here we go. 28-year-old Luca Bersal needs three more frames to become Belgium and mainland Europe's first world champion. Mark Selby's already knocked in the first ever maximum in a crucible final, and it'll take more perfect snooker if he's to claw back a five-frame deficit. It is time to say hello to two world champions in the commentary box. It's good evening to Sean Murphy and Dennis Taylor. Good evening, Hazel. Good evening, everyone. Standing evasion. Thank you, Elaine, gentlemen. Frame 26. For these two wonderful Sit stars down. here. Mark Selby to break. And it's a pleasure to be sitting next to Sean Murphy. Good evening, Dennis. Good evening, everybody. What an atmosphere in the Crucible Theatre tonight. Are we going to see a first-time champion crowned? Or will we see Mark Selby fight back for crown five? Touching that one, Mark. Touching ball, which helps the situation. He's been there all week. And there's <laughs> someone in his line of sight, but Brendan Moore said, well, he's been there all week, Mark. <laughs> probably focusing that much, he didn't notice. Probably a photographer, I would think. Now, is Luca going to play a thin safety or an attacking safety? Well, there's your answer. That's opened them right up. And these early exchanges are absolutely vital if Mark Selby is to find any way back into this match. He's done it before, but he desperately needs a good start. Doesn't want to catch the brown. He's got to get that cue ball near the ball cushion because Luca Bussell has pulled off some astounding pots throughout this whole world championship. What a start this is, right in the centre of the pocket. Got four shots and shot of the championship. You could add all this player's shots.
But if anyone can come back, it's Mark Selby. But if this player keeps knocking those in, it's going to be a tough and a long way back. Now, as your luck with the kiss. Not the best. Four. That's a very thin snick back into the left corner. A very tough one into the right middle. Now, this is so thin, this. Five. Well, it's just the way he's played all championship, isn't it? Refusing to take a step back. Determined to make the most of every single visit to the table. Pink's out of commission at the Seven. moment. The black's a bit awkward, so... I have to concentrate on the blue for a couple of shots. He's already up looking at the black and planning a potential route. Eight. Now, if he can play for the one, the two reds to the right of the black. But I don't know if that red is over the pocket and blocking the path for it. Yeah, it will be blocking that pocket, the one that's closest to the uh, right 30. corner there. So once again, concentrating on the blue. Nineteen. May I elect this Quite. time to pop the blue and he's back looking at those two reds near the black, but he's got the angle if he wishes to bring the pink and a few reds into play, but he's looking at all the options there. Yeah, I think the cannon's a good shot because even if he gets position on the red at the little cluster of five, he can't get to a colour from that red. Now the thing is, when he removes this red, twenty-five, he's got to get up to the blue again, and then in a couple of shots' time. See, that's blocking the path. That's why he wants to remove this one. Well, if he gets the other side 26. of the blue from that position, it's some shot, but I think it's a bit straight. Because <laughs> his plan there was to get on that red I mentioned. You see, as we look at it, the two reds to the right of the black. If he got on the second one of the two, he could have opened the black spot area, but he's straight on the blue. But he can force an angle with his powerful Q action, but I mm, don't think it's on. Yeah, he could possibly force the blue into the right half of the middle pocket. That would risk missing it and force the cue ball twice across the table or the brown. Have to play the brown off three cushions to get to that red near the black spot. That's the one he would want to get to. Brown's a big shot. Well, he's going to take it on. This will be some shot. Uh, here comes the cue ball. This looks pretty good to me. What a positional shot that is.
30. Wonderful shot. Thirty one. And once he's played this red underneath the black spot, the red at the bottom of that little cluster of five we know is available. In potting it, that will free up the one next to it. So those three reds represent another 24 possible points. 39. Which means he will still need one of the other five that will be around the pink. So he's going to have to move something if he's to win this first frame of the evening session. When he takes this next red, he's clearing the path for the one next to it. 47. It's a wonderful start this evening for the Belgian bullet. 48. And he's on that red. But I don't think he can develop one of the other reds on the way 54. through hasn't got the angle to do that and he's not too many pots away from securing this frame. 55. Just needs one more red. So one good cannon and this opening frame this evening will be his. That's okay, he can cut the one into the middle pocket. Yeah. 62. Just spotted something on the red there. 63. <laughs> Just 59 67. remaining. 67 in front. Mark Selby will come back to the table. Luca Bissell, 67. <laughs> A terrific start. Almost clinching the frame with one visit. Needs a good kiss and hasn't got it. That is unlucky. What a pot that was. It looks like he's going to get just the one point for it. It's going for the black. Needs this in. Otherwise, it's frame over. What a pot that was. Unbelievable to cut that in. Oh, he bows his head. Mark Can Selby. you believe it? He Eight. looks at Luca conceded and he concedes. What a wonderful start for Luca Bussell. That earlier break of 67. It paved the way to open up the lead even further. It's now 16-10.
Two great champions in Steve Davis and John Parrott with us for the evening to see who will cross the line. The winning line is in sight and so far Luca Brassell showing no signs of balking at it, John Parrott. Can someone tell him where he is? <laughs> I mean, honestly, the most natural and fluent performance you could wish to see. And the two shots we're going to pick out here, the opening red, Steve, that's not a bad piece of cueing, is it? Yeah, fascinating. I mean, he's been foot to the floor the whole tournament, unrelenting, attacking all the time, refusing to get bogged down in any type of safety play, blasting his way out of trouble whenever it happened. It's an astonishing standard, a standard we don't understand from, <laughs> from our era. Right? It, it wasn't played then. I mean, and he's potted a brown after that. He's looking at it. He's, he's gone around the table quite a bit. I like the, the, He took a bit of time with this one, but the way he plays this is really clever. Lots of people may have played this, tried to get in the cue ball and come around the angles and inside the blue. He's gone outside it, come down the table, can't play that any better. Beautiful shot. And the intriguing thing is, from what we've seen of Mark Selby, albeit just a couple of shots, he looks like he is going to go for everything because he's going to have to go for everything. Well, Mark's been in, in, he's a bit of, in a bit of a straitjacket mm. in a way. He's like he's he's being contained by his opponent in a way that's not usually the way you try and contain Mark Selby. He's wiping the floor at the moment, but you know full well Mark won't give up without a fight. Thank but you. Somehow he's got to do a Houdini act here. Look at Brazil. We go. So Luca Brassell breaks off for what he hopes will be the last time in this year's championship. Just needs two more frames to become champion of the world. And what an amazing route it's been to the final. Don't forget, he's been here on five previous occasions and never won a match until this year. Not sure if he can get through to the red for the middle pocket. Past the pink he might be, and even though the white's in the jaws of the pockets, we know what he is capable of. Oh. Wow. He just gets down and knocks it in as if it was over the pocket. If he could cannon the red when potting the blue, the red to the right of the bunch would be ideal. Oh, he's still OK. He's gone past that, so he's got a choice of reds here. Black available into Six. one pocket at the moment, I think. He's just checking that there. Nobody's seen, but watch his cue. That was uh, just decelerated slightly. Obviously, that red doesn't pot. It's next to the black. This shot's going to tell us how Mark Selby's feeling. There's a few different options here. It's the chance of taking this red directly above the cue ball into the green pocket. Could play for blue or pink. And just uh, someone coughing just on his backswing there. I think he's pleased that the red didn't go in now because he didn't get on the pink as he intended. And if potted that red, he would have been in all sorts of trouble. Oh, 
as long as your opponent needs two frames, you always feel that you're in with a chance. It's when they get to just needing the one frame and you're so far behind, you know you can't make one mistake, otherwise it's all over. sure if the red at the bottom of the pack pots to the left middle pocket. The pink would be available if it went in. He wouldn't be leaving a great deal. That's what he's just checking now. But it must be tight. He's looking at this red from both sides. Yeah, there you see it's very tight. In fact, I don't think that pots. Just a bit of an awkward frame now with the two reds up the other end of the table. Could just come off the side cushion and land into the pack there from the left side of the table. But what has he got lined up here? Do you know he's looking at playing the double on this red to the right hand side of the table into the left middle pocket cue ball up and down for the black he's gone for it has he got it oh. of course he has well, what a shot Luca Brussel and well picked out there Sean but look where he put the cue ball he made that into a shot to nothing. It wasn't leaving anything. And the fact he pulled off that incredible double, he's on the black. Oh, the pink's close. Eight. Yeah, funny shot that because we talk all week about how much spin Luca generates. It actually worked against him there. The top spin brought the cue ball into the cannon on the pink. He actually was playing for the red by the middle. Yeah, watch the cue ball here. Massive amounts of top spin arc the cue ball there. But for that, he would have missed the pink and gone up past the blue. So that was one of the few times that a bit too much spin was a problem. Luca Brussel, eight. <laughs> if that's somebody's phone that keeps going off, can you make it sure it's on silent, please? of a stalemate at the moment because of those two reds that are up past the blue. We've seen a few frames in the semi-final with uh, Mark Allen and Mark Selby where they just from this position uh, had a re-rack. No potential double this time because of the pink over the <coughs> right middle pocket. Oh, the white back behind the black and near the cushion. Just a 
a little bit pacey. I was hoping to get that tight on the cushion and block the path through to being able to nestle into the back of the reds there. That's where he wants to put the cue ball, where the tip of the cue is. Always oh, bring the red back down. He was trying to send that red into the red near the middle pocket. Now, has it bounced far enough, or does this cut back in? He cut one in in the previous frame. Mark Selby missed sending that red on to the other red near the middle pocket. It does cut. One. Well, that's the only position on the table where he can't cut the pink in. The green doesn't go to the middle pocket. That was the worst Outcome there, cannoning into the brown and finishing over in the corner. Now, where's the blue going to finish? Where is the blue going to finish? Nearly in the middle pocket. Look at Russell one. That was a very, very risky long blue. He was a bit unlucky, as I say, with the cannon on the brown, but maybe knock that in two out of ten, if that. One. Eight. Well done, Fold, isn't it? <laughs> Jester from Leicester, living up to his nickname there. I just said to somebody in the audience, well done for holding it. Ultimate open 12. red. So off this red or the next red, he'll need an angle off the colour to split those reds. But they're fairly 13. loosely packed, so you'd think any collision into <coughs> them would open them up. Sixteen. Just gone a little further than he intended, so he may have to head up to the bulk colours again. Seventeen. Yeah, you'll have a look at the pack of reds. I don't know where I've put the little circle. If you could leave that one, pop the red and open the pack, or will he go straight into them from the green here? Straight into them. How's your luck, Mark? It's pretty good. Twenty. Very controlled cannon there. But still a little unlucky, as we show it to you again. Didn't power it too much. 
But look at that red. It's gone next to the pink. The other red went next to the black. I was a little bit unlucky there to leave both high-valued colors awkward. Twenty-one. Oh, he's having to work very hard for these here. And he wanted to be straight on this red for the right corner. He could have held for the 24. black or the pink. And that's finished. Just a little awkward again. So once again, quite a bit to do with the cue ball. I think the pink might be available this time. I don't think he'll risk trying to bring the black and red into play there. So it's back all the way around the table. The pink obviously doesn't pop 25. into the right corner. <laughs> Can he get on that red that's closest to the black? This could be the key shot. Looks good to me. Looks very good. Mark keen to see whether this red to the left of the four will pass into this left middle pocket. He'd love it if one of them went into the corner. He's just looking now. He's seeing whether the pink passes actually. Well, from that camera angle, it looks like it does. If he could play onto the pink, that would free up position for the red next door to it and might lead him to this frame. Thirty. Just study in the four reds now. The one to the left is potable into the left middle 36. pocket. Thirty-six. But I don't think any of them go into the right corner. Thirty seven. Perfect angle. Can he develop all reds? He's played it well. Forty-four. Forty-five. So the lead now, 36 with 51 remaining. 51. Red and a black. And he'll be across the line in this frame. And as you said earlier, Dennis, when you can 52. keep your opponent needing two, you always feel like you've got more than half a chance. What about this break though, Sean? Up and down the table. He's had to work really hard for these. 60. <coughs> A 
Luca was a little unlucky. Pot of the red, Cannon, the brown, the pink was right over the middle pocket. Looked like he was bound to finish on the 66. color. And then he took one of the most difficult blues on that ended leaving 67. Mark in. This was the one that was so tough. Seventy-eight. A treble. Doesn't matter. Yeah, it's in. Well done, Mark. Carl, <laughs> look at the self five. Well, that was a wonderful effort. Seventy-eight. And the play. From Mark Selby and his wife Vicky and friends there, they would have enjoyed that. They know he won't give up but it's still quite a way back, 16-11. I'm down in the practice room here, and it's so quiet, but what a wonderful couple of frames we've already been treated to tonight. Uh, Luca Brissell, he tried a very difficult blue at that cost in the frame. Have a look at the position. OK, he's still going for his shots, and that's brilliant. Uh, but there was an alternative. I mean, he had a look. He had a little smile on his face, the pink... As we see, almost fluked the blue. But look at the other shot. The pink is over the middle pocket. And he could have played a shot like Sean Murphy played maybe a couple of years ago in the World Championship. And it wasn't really that difficult. Off one cushion. Off one cushion. Pot the pink. And... Oh! Oh! Hey, there you go. And the red is over the hole. I got a demo. You can't believe it. And Luca didn't see it. He should have. <laughs> Cost in the frame. <laughs> Nicely that is a brave player trying to take on anything that's going on in this final in terms of demos, John, isn't it? Can you, can you just send the recording off again? You're going to keep that one. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of pressure in that practice room, Steve. Yes, yeah. Uh, uh, not as much pressure as that. Anyway, um, he didn't even have to go for the, uh, for the pink. He could have played a safety shot to the top cushion, but that's not how Luke has been playing. Cesar Wee Thank made a mistake uh, going for too many balls. Um, if anybody's going to punish you, Mark Selby will. Yeah, talk about pressure. He's under it here, Mark Selby. I think our own crafty Ken, as Mark hits the blue, but crafty Ken in the studio. I think the pink wasn't quite over the pocket like that. Still a good shot, though. One. Oh, excellent pot from Luca. It was a natural to cannon the reds, and now having placed that red nearer the corner pocket, he can screw the cue ball into these pack of reds, spread them far and wide, and the screw will bring the cue ball out for that red. This could turn into a frame winning chance very quickly if he gets this shot right. The break-off shot, I can't remember ever seeing Mark Selby hit the blue from the break-off shot. He's so usually so precise. Eight.
Nine. That cue ball's finished in a very awkward position there. Over this red, it's going to be very awkward queuing. And you're very straight on the black. So forward and backwards in a straight line from there. There is a red to the yellow pocket. If he gets the cue ball where it is now, but look how much he's having to jack the cue up. And look at the backspin he was able to achieve from there. Goodness me. That cue ball has 16. gone twice as far as he intended. And there is still a red to the left middle pocket, but that could be bordering on madness. Time for a good, honest safety shot here, Dennis, I think. Yeah, it was amazing the action he got on that bridging over the red. He's looking at the good, honest safety shot you mentioned, Sean. If he leaves the one that's to the right of the black, he's got to hide the cue ball. Otherwise, he'll leave a pot on that one. So it's important to get the cue ball exactly where he wants. Luca Russell, that's going to leave a gap through to that red I mentioned. So Mark Selby is normally pretty good at this type of shot, but he's 16-11 behind in the final of the World Championship. This is far from easy. Talk about a shot to nothing. Look for the white finish. So. Mark Selby won. It was a wonderful pot, but it was a wonderful shot, even if the red didn't go in. Because there's no red near a cushion, this is not an easy escape to get it safe. You'll have to glance off this red if he uh, gets it. Doesn't want to hit it full ball. Oh, what a shot! <laughs> what an escape that, to judge that. Well, that's incredible. I think entries to shots of the championship have closed, but that was phenomenal, that shot. Exactly as played. Side cushion, touch of right-hand side. Second side cushion catches that red quarter ball. Cue ball on the cushion as played. Yeah, we keep talking about Lucas. Potting and his attacking style, but when he needs it, he's got a terrific touch and a very good tactical game. But to escape from that, well, it says it all. Choosing that time to play a plant rather than a safety shot. He concentrated so much on trying to get the plant that he's left that cue ball a good couple of feet short of its intended position. And this red above and to the left of the black is possible. This red will cut in, but you'll be looking for a path back down the table. Got to be wary of the pack and the red, the left side of the table here. 
It's okay. The shot here is to play this red next to the black. The red will stop where the black is and you can swing the cue ball around the angles back in behind the yellow. I always prefer to play a shot where you can accurately predict where the object ball is going to finish, but he's playing the red up the side cushion, I think. Back to the green corner. And that's the risk when you start moving multiple reds. Needs the cover on the green. Little bit fortunate that you'd have to say. Knocked a red over both pockets and covered them both. Well, I think all Luke can do, well, he, he, he's got all sorts of problems here. He'll have to think about this. I mean, he might consider that if he's got nothing else, cue ball onto the side, cushion in behind the second red, pop the red over the corner. Is he trying to knock the red in off the other red? Right, is there a gap through to the one that's over the pocket? Yep. He was in a terrible spot there was Luca. He did manage to screw the white back, but mm, that might be a little tight then. Don't know if he can hold for the black, but the pink's tied up. The blue's way up the other end of the table. Superb queuing there to hold for the black. Oh. Seem to. Mark Selby won. He had to get a lot of the screw back on that, but he seemed to hit it harder than he has been doing. And once you put it on the near jaw, there's no way they'll go in at that pace. Thank you. One. Well, it'd be lovely to get on the red by the blue spot, followed by the black, get the black back in play, because those reds above the black spot are all waiting. And very quickly, this could turn into a chance to get this frame on the board and get to within one of the championship. Yeah, he's specifically played to try and get low on that red to get towards the back. Bit of a grimace there from the face of Luca Brassell. Five. He can still play for the black. <laughs> Doesn't have to play for it now. But he could just drop the red in and play the black with the rest. That's what he's looking at. Or he could play for the green. That's what he's assessing now. And come round for this single red. And revisit the black in a moment. Six. Oh, 
this is going to finish awkward. Wanted to be straighter Nine. on this, but he's such a shot maker. He can pull off all sorts of pots and do all sorts with that cue ball. Ten. Currently 92% success with the rest in this match. Potted 22 out of 24 attempts. How's the pace on this cue ball? Looks a bit hard. Don't think anything goes into the left corner. Does the single red go? I don't think so. 13. Very much looks like the end of break here. And straight away he's looking at the blue to see if he can somehow get the white in behind that. He'd have to go twice across the table with a little stun shot. There's the butt of the cue up, a little bit of side. Here comes the cue ball. This looks good to me. Luca Bissell, oh, 30. Not quite. Now, can he get through to the red that's finished up near the middle pocket? Luca didn't intend that to go there. He can get through to it. Just got to be aware of the corner pocket with the cue ball if he cuts this in. It looks unnatural, so he'll have to get a little bit of work on the white to stop it going in the corner pocket. Is it going to go in the other corner pocket? One. He was sort of halfway back to his seat. He thought maybe the white might go in the other corner. Yellow ball. Mark Selby one. There's another shot that has got Mark in a spot of bother. The weight on the safety shot, excellent. And one of the reasons that Luca has done so well throughout this championship is brilliant century breaks, potting them from everywhere, but some of his safety has been excellent as well.
attempt at the pot that time. He just cut the red a little bit thinner than he wanted, and that's why he's hit the bump of the middle pocket. He was trying to get in behind the green. Does that red pass through the gap? Well, if it doesn't, and you can clearly see it doesn't, he might be able to hit the other one to the left there, play the safety shot and possibly cut it in. He's looking at the angle from both ends. It's a little bit of a guide. He'll be playing the safety shot, but he'll go close to potting this. Not quite, but a good cue ball again. Luca just needs to be super careful here that he doesn't accidentally knock a red to a corner. Needs a thin contact on this red and there's a chance something could end up over a pocket. Oh, and that flick on the brown. Nearly snookered Mark Selby on everything. Can he get a chance? Because this is a must-win frame for Mark Selby. 17-11 would be more than a mountain to climb, but 16-12, he's still in there. Well, it's not bad. The fact that the white's gone near the cushion means the two potential pots are very difficult. And the white have stayed away from the cushion. I'm sure Luca would have had a go. Keep it tight. The blue is still the target for the cue ball. Lots of side. Spin this around the angles. Not quite, needs the green to help him out here. And it's not going to, he hit that too thin. Well, not often you see Luca giving himself a telling off in the seat. His temperament has been unbelievable. to pull up to leave the brown so it's just a snooker bramble <laughs> mark Selby one A little bit unlucky there. He played the snooker, but he wanted to bring the blackout into play. But it's dead safe. Tricky if he tries the two cushion escape to glance off the reds. Very difficult this. Foul, gonna miss. You don't mind missing it the first attempt. Much better that than hitting the red full ball, leaving the white 
up this end of the table. Foul on the miss. Mark Selby four. It's as if the white's checking off the second cushion. So is he Mark. playing it with a tracer side? He needs a little bit of left hand side. Yeah, well played. Always the chance that you can double a red like that, but it's in behind the green. He's looking at the possibility of getting it being in behind the blue again, but does he want to develop another color Rumble. here? So is he going to try and free the brown and the black and get in behind the blue? He certainly is. Mark Selby won. Sacrificed a good snooker there to bring the black into play, Sean. Yeah, I'm not sure about that shot. The tuck in behind the green seemed impossible to get wrong. And whilst it's always nice to have the black in play, it's not a relevant part of the frame. He doesn't need it. No, he wants to go and have a go at this red closest to the left-hand corner. It looks as if the cue ball's running into traffic. So if he goes for it, he need to get it. Absolutely right, Sean, running into traffic, but what a pot. Three. Four. Anywhere near that circle, round off three cushions would leave him on. Choice of two reds by the black. Yeah, didn't strike that great. Caught the green a bit thick. He's still on this top red, but he's a good couple of feet short. Seven. The red nearest the middle might take more of his interest from that position. Could possibly play it into the green pocket if he thought it's too acute an angle to drop it in the middle. This one nearest the black spot's very risky. Selby seven. 
Well, we've seen a few of them wobble and then just drop into the pocket. That was close, but not quite close enough. Looked as if it was going to wobble and then drop. It's not all bad news, though, for Mark, because in playing that red and missing it, he's put the other red on top of the black in an unpotable position, unless Luca can find a way to the right-hand side of the table. And that's not straightforward from here. Oh, but he's controlled that absolutely perfectly. What? what a wonderful shot. That looked nothing on your screens. Perfectly placed now to get to that net red next to the black. Just the first small little signs there of a bit of anxiety Seven. creeping into his cue action. Just hit that one a bit hard. Got a bit more spin than he meant to, and that's why the cue ball's finished nowhere. Little bit of a nervy one, that. Played the cue ball off both cushions, but because he hit it harder, he got too much spin, and that stopped the cue ball there off that second cushion. Luca Bissell, seven. Yeah, no attempt at the pot there. A few oohs and ahs from the crowd, but he wasn't trying to pot that. He was trying to get a position and force Mark into moving that red by the side cushion. And once that's in play, you'd fancy that whoever pots the next red will win the frame. I think this red passes the pink. It's a shot to nothing. Safety at the same time. <coughs> oh, now that the green's gone next to the blue, what a target to get in behind here. He'll swing this around off one, two, three cushions to get in behind green and blue. He's very good at this. Oh, he said it's too thin. Is the whites in? Oh. Nearly. Hit that far too thin. Very unlike Mark Selby. He knows he's got to win this frame. And every ounce of Luca's DNA is telling him to go for this red. He's potted so many of these shots throughout this championship, which is why he finds himself in this position. Desperately wants to take this on. If he pots it, he might get to within one of the championship. Understandable there. There's an awful lot of pressure on Luca with that shot. He thought about the safety, but he's carried on the way he's played throughout this year's championship. One. And I think this red passes the black, so there's not a problem. As long as he can screw up past the brown, he'll get nicely onto that. Uh, 
This looks pretty good to me. It's to just keep coming a bit further. Three. He wanted to be a little closer to this red. It's all about the angle on the pink. Can he screw back and miss the middle pocket and get out onto the yellow? He's looking at it. Might just be able to do that. Yeah, there's a slight angle. He'll screw back and just miss the middle pocket to the right as we look at it and spin the white towards the yellow. Played it well. Ten. And you have to just marvel at Mark Selby's cast iron will. Twice. Just won't go away. And he will make Luca Brussel earn both of these frames that he needs. And the closer it gets, the more difficult that man on your screens is going to find it. And this is not a straightforward run to the winning line in this frame. Fifteen. Anything but straight on the blue, but blue to pink's going to be tough. I mean, that's not a gimme there. Doesn't 19. want to be straight. And he's not, he's got an angle on the blue. It's a frame he had to win. And he's won it. 13. Mark Selby is far from done. It's still a long way back, but that was a must win frame for him. And now he's just four frames behind 16 12. Mark Selby looks up to his wife up in the balcony there, and Vicky is constant supporter. She's been there for his four wins. This is his sixth final, of course, and you can never, ever write this man off. John, he's come back from 8-3 down against Ronnie in one. He's come back from 10-4 down against John Higgins. But, Steve, there's really not as much wriggle room this time if he's to pull it off from this point. No, um... He's not playing well enough at the moment, but if he keeps on getting chances, he will get into form. And Luca Bressel, who plays an amazing attacking snooker that is a higher wire act, if he just pushes it a little bit too far, he's in danger of going over the edge. And we saw that with the long red, John. It was a long way off from yeah. Luca. Yeah, I mean, it's very difficult to be critical because he's been knocking them in all the way through the championship. but. There's one or two of them tonight where the percentages are certainly not in your favour, and especially with the tension knocking about. Listen, he plays his own brand of snooker, and I said the other day, you live by the sword and you die by the sword playing like that. Unfortunately, one or two this evening look a little bit dodgy. The blue off the spot he played beforehand, and that red there, there was definitely an easier safety shot. It's understandable, getting close to the finishing line, um, and the way he's been playing, relentlessly attacking, mm. it still w may pay off because he's done superbly well to get into this position. And he's sort of he's rewarded by having a few cracks to get over the line. But you know full well that Mark Selby will make him squirm in his chair to get there. Well, Mark's obviously been here. He's worn several T-shirts along the way. And his experience in a best of 35 is clearly of great importance here. And even after Luca's very first best of 25, remember, he'd never played a best of 25 until he got to the second round here. He said that was too, too long. 
he's coped brilliantly with the new challenges that the longer format have brought him. But John, how tough is it in a four session 35? No, it's extremely tough. And uh, I have to say, he does look remarkably fresh. That's one of the things they're saying about Luca that's just been remarkable because he's had tough matches all the way through. He looks great, but there's a winning post and it's very close. And at the moment, he's getting torn between just pushing the boat out a little bit too much and just playing the odd shot. And this is the worst man behind you to be playing because he will not go away. He won't. Look at Bursell in the ascendancy, yeah. needing two Close more frames. This is the last one before the interval. Frame 29, Luca Brussel to break. Thank you. Coming up a little bit short with the break off shot. And as he's done in most of the frames, has left a potential pot to this right corner. It's the sort of shot that the players practice these days. But they're far from easy. What about that for an opener? <laughs> and he's got too much on that one. Just ran full. 12 inches further than he intended, but he, like Luca, creates so much backspin with that wonderful cue action he has. Five. by that last chance saloon feeling that you get when you're this far behind. Mark Selby starting to find his range now and most of these shots are going in the absolute center of the pockets. And he's placed that cue Seven. ball in the perfect spot to pop this red, cannon into the red and black and knock the black on. Always tricky along the cushion. Fifteen. Sixteen. The fact that the red was tight on the cushion just helped it slightly there. And a very key shot coming up, stunning into the Reds here. Oh, look at this split. What a shot he's played there. 23. Well, you won't see any better split than that, Sean. Played to perfection. Had to catch that red full in the face. And every single red on the table moved 24. with that shot. And if I were in Camp Brussel, I'd start writing the half-time team talk now. Because if Mark Selby builds up a head of steam, this could be a long way from being over just yet. <coughs> I 
cannot overemphasize the difference it makes that Mark Selby has been out on this arena floor on four occasions and taken the trophy home. The fact that he knows how to do it, he knows how to cope with those emotions, makes Luca's job all the more difficult. Thank you. 30. Thirty-seven. Thirty-eight. Could have done with just running through a few inches further. This would have been straightforward to pot the blue and hold for the red next to it, but It's come up just that little bit short. It's only fractions. <laughs> Pretty good recovery though. Forty-three. Well, it was the split when he opened the reds up that has given him this opportunity. 43. And isn't he taking them well? He left to go back down for the blue now, but that's not a problem. 51. This was the split. Have a look at the reds. Fifty-two. Didn't really matter which side of the blue he finished on because of reds either side. And he's finished absolutely dead straight. He wanted a little angle either way. Just a fraction either way, and this would have been so straightforward. Yeah, if he's in trouble here, he can just pop the blue and hold the spot, send the blue to the pink spot. You wouldn't think it'd be too hard to reach over and pop that red, although the pink is in an awkward place for that. So maybe not. Fifty-seven ahead now, seventy-five remaining. So, fifty-seven. Two more reds, and he'll have won this first mini session of four frames, three one, and he's right back in this. Fifty-eight. The crowd knew that red was in before we did. They were right in line with it. A lot of them. You could hear a good shot as the blue was only halfway to the pocket. Blue and one more red needed. There's the blue and it's gonna be a fairly comfortable red to secure this frame. 63. Oh. 
Right, it's an incredible performance tonight, this from Mark Selby to get himself back into this match. 69. Luca hasn't had a break over 30 since the first frame tonight. I think this interval is just coming at the right time for Luca Brussel. Mark Selby starting to build up a head of steam. 70. Needs to use this 15, 20 minute interval to his advantage. He's had two century breaks in the final. He's had 11 in this year's Kazoo World Championship. 75. Another potential one here, but two tricky reds. 76. Is he going to try and force all the way around the angles to get close to the reds? <laughs> you could say he's powered that in. And here comes the white. Eighty-one. Thank you. Eighty-two. Be like a 89. little trick shot, very, very thin one, but to the queue in the air. Is it there? Is it there? It's n it is 90. Ninety-five. Ninety-seven. Oh. Absolutely wonderful century break from Mark Selby. He is far from finished in this year's World Championship. He will never give up. 109. Well, Mark. Man, he's brilliant with the rest. Let's see if he can screw back onto the black. This would be some shot. Look how low he's hitting it. Get in there. Look at this for a screw back. 150. What a wonderful finish from the four-time champion of the world, Mark Selby. It was a must-win for him. And didn't he win it in Selby. style, a break of 122, although he's still three behind at 16-13. The gap was six. It is now three. How dangerous are these moments for Luca Brissell fans, Steve Davis? The surgeon is just sharpening his scalpel. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! Oh. Uh, I th Listen, we don't we, we don't have a horse in this race. Yeah, we we, we love all the players. We, we're so it's been such an entertaining final, but it's great to watch Mark Selby coming back, and we know what it feels like to be Luca. Yeah, I hope he doesn't crumble. But I hope, you know, it's just a fair fight. Yeah, he is Snooker's ultra marathon athlete. It ain't over until he's finished. Put it this way, if you've got a betting slip at home with Mark Selby on it, don't rip it up. Because you know what you're going to get. You're on a runner every time he comes out. The interval has come as a brilliant time for Luca to mm. get out of the auditorium because at the moment, Mark is on a roll and looking really good. It's so hard to criticise. We have criticised. There's a couple of shots he's played that have just pushed the barriers of attack just a bit too far mm. for, for our liking but obviously it would be for our liking because <laughs> yeah. some of the shots he's played are all out of our sort of like liking but you don't you don't give Mark Selby encouragement 
Mm. But you, how does Luca Bressel rein it in just a fraction? Because that's not his style. So it's hard to pick out where he... Because if he goes the other way too far, mm. that's even more encouraging. And the thing about it is, we were talking about, you know, Mark Selby's been here all these times and knows what it's like. Mm. He also knows what it's like to be a first time in the final and being in one, and trying to get over the line for the first time to win your first World Championship. So he knows exactly what Luca's going through. And the more pressure he seems to be under, the more freedom he seems to be finding, which is quite ironic, given that we know there are two facets to Mark Selby's game. Yeah, I, yeah, I think when all the great champions uh, are back against the wall, they don't even worry about missing, they just play. Uh, and they just compete uh, and that's a wonderful position to be in you, you don't realize that you can actually compete at that level even though it seems like you should be failing all right gents well over the last 17 days we've just about seen it all here we've had outrageous pots some outrageous protests we've had two one four sevens we've had some verbal we've had a big warm hug we've had late late nights we've had a wonderful rookie in CJ we emerging before our very eyes and we've seen the emergence of the man playing Luca snooker oh yes and a grandstand finish to the final what a joy The game's top 16 players arrived in Sheffield today ahead of this year's World Championship at the Crucible with the tournament wide open and an interesting field of qualifiers There's only going to be one winner. You want to be that winner. Anything other than a win is a failure. World number one, the reigning, defending champion of the world, the Rocky. I feel very fatigued, it's like a glandular fever sort of feeling. But I battled as well as I could, I couldn't give any more there today. This first round is always a bit of a banana skin, isn't it? Oh, terrible, really. It's going to be a struggle against anyone on the tour to win a frame, let alone a match. So I'll go away and I'll have to do something different for next season. All you can ask for is just one chance in a deciding frame. What a pot. And I've played so many matches in the Crucible and played a lot worse and won. I must heap praise on my opponent. I gave him as best as I could give him uh, and uh, he just had an answer for everything. I've prepared the best I ever have coming into this tournament, ever. We're one short of the maximum. But it's a 1-4-6, which equals the highest break in this year's World Championship. This black for his second 1-4-6. Certainly no one's ever done it in one match, and to do two and three frames is you know, kind of crazy, I suppose. 1-4-6s. This could be a wonderful chance for a maximum break. It's definitely a bucket list thing to try and do, make a 147 at the Crucible. You know, there's no pressure like it, to be honest. I just thought, yeah, come at me, Black, and uh, I was perfect on it, so happy days. He was there within three or four seconds. Nobody could could have done anything. And I seen a woman, like, nearly on the table. I was, I just, it was so surreal. I thought it was a streaker. I thought it was a bloke streaker or something, because you, you don't have people jump like that, do you, on the... It's just don't know what's happening. And what we're going to do about this? I mean, it, there's no way they're going to be able to hoover this up. Hi, I'm Hossein Bafai. The Smiling Assassin. He's my hero when I was young and uh, I don't think about him, no, at all. But he's such a nice person when he's asleep. It's not boxing, we're going there to eat each other. We have to use our brain to win. <laughs> I've always liked to say before I was very close uh, a few years ago and then something went wrong. Hopefully that's put to bed now and we can move on, you know. 
three frames away from a famous win and an appearance in the quarterfinals on a debut. Jack Jones. Three frames is uh, a lot against Neil Robertson. The closer I got to the winning line, the better I felt. I'll tell you what, if he can repeat that in the quarterfinal, he'll take the beating. What a break from John Higgins. He leads Karen Wilson by 10 frames to nil. Everything that could go wrong did go wrong, really. Everything's going wrong at the moment. Surely the wizard of Wishaw couldn't close this match out with a maximum break. Oh, no! Oh, no! Just very frustrating. I'm, I'm gutted. It's not easy to lose like that. I know my time's coming to an end. I'm not going to be coming here as often as I would like. No, I think he played really well all the way through, and we want to put him right under pressure towards the end level and all, he stood up to it. You know, with no problems at all. I just hope he carries our form in the next game and does himself justice. He's put in an unbelievable performance to beat one of the all-time greats. I should be uh, proud of him that I'm still up here competing at that age. The World Championships at the end of the day, anyone who's left in is in for a reason because they're playing well. Mark just put, put the foot down on the throat and Dan never had any answer to it. But he's so difficult to play, he's, he's an animal on the snooker table. It's just the way he just keeps on potting, potting, potting. Absolute machine of a snooker player. I just felt like my all-round game was probably nine out of ten in every department. First sort of goal, get through round one. Your next goal is get to that one table setup. So I'm there, but I don't want to just get to the one table setup. I want to try and do my best to win the tournament. And it's going to be a long way to go yet. They're only halfway. I've played them previous to this. Yeah, I'm not surprised that he came in and, and beat Shaw and beat Robert Mulkins. What a shot. Oh, but how about that? We are going to a decider. The biggest shot of his life. I think the the big shot of his life. And the speed of it is just phenomenal, but it doesn't look like he's playing that quick. That's the, that's the, that's the marvellous thing about it. He just strolls around the table, bobs along, boom, on the ball, bump on the ball, bump, here you go, and you think, wow, this is, this is lovely. I don't really mind losing. It's, it's not as bad as people think. But I love winning, though. To play like that and win is, is quite crazy. But just a phenomenal talent. He really is probably the most talented player I've ever seen, ever. Well, we're going down to one table tomorrow. But by golly, we've been having...
the stage is set. It's showtime here at the Crucible. Absolutely sensational. Outrageous. It is relentless, and the scoreline now reads 14-5. I was aware that no one ever came back from nine frames behind. So that was in my mind as well to do with a bit of history. I had my, my A game today and uh, I needed a bit of luck as well and I got it today. Oh, look at this. This is the biggest comeback in the history of the Crucible Theatre. Look what it means! <laughs> no, he's not going anywhere, Mark. He's just going to stand there. <laughs> yeah, wonderful shot. That was Mark Selby at his absolute best. Mark's very, very similar to me, you know, grit and determination. From 16-10, he could have easily let his head go down, but uh, every credit to him for battling and pushing me all the way. He'll have to pick up his game because Luca Brassell will be a big, big danger to him getting his fifth title. of them here that would have never seen a maximum break. For me, halfway through it, I wasn't even thinking about it. It was just a matter of just winning the frame to try and get back into the match. I was hoping he would make it because the balls were nice. It just one little awkward red on the cushion. Felt calm. I don't really think I was out of position any part of the break. You know, apart from the red down the rail uh, was a little bit tricky. I could have easily missed that, but I sort of got on it perfect, really, just to roll it in. Could not be any better. It's got to be perfect on the blue. I thought to myself, if I ever got in that position, then I'd be shaking like a leaf. But, you know, I was quite calm. It's always a great moment, even if it's not yourself. You're hoping that your opponent's going to make it. Take a bow, Mark Selby! The maximum break! To make it at the Crucible is special, but to make it in the final is even more special. Enjoying the moment of the 147, but at the same time, obviously, there's still a job to do to try and win the tournament. Oh, wasn't it just a joy to see Mark Selby's face as a smile as wide as a mile, I must say. And um, we started out in this championship, all the talk was of a possible eighth outright record win for Ronnie O'Sullivan, but Stephen Hendry's joint record of seven is safe for another year. Steve, what will be your favourite takeaway from this time? Uh, well, I don't think I've enjoyed a World Championship uh, watching the matches as much as this year ever. Um, I think the, the things that will, will stay with me are the havoc that Cesar Wee and Luca Bressel caused. Just astonishing snooker from both of them. The most attacking players I think we've ever seen at the Crucible Theatre. Uh, and one of them's in the final and the other came very close to being in the final. Uh, it's just a joy to watch them play. It has been, yeah. And for you, John? Well, this final, mm. because I think the opening two sessions were two of the most entertaining I've seen in a world final. Absolutely brilliant to watch. I have to say, and slightly personal, I was in the commentary box last night for my first ever 147 maximum in the final and I was with Dennis there and it was a privilege to do that so it was brilliant scenes Mark Selby was brilliant afterwards with the crowd as well but to make a 147 in a world final was very special. A bit of history wasn't it? It really was and I hope you could share it with us last night uh, but I'm sure we'll be seeing pictures of it for very many years to come. Alright it's time to unveil our shot of the championship so far uh, and not surprisingly the name of Luca Brussel features largely in John's selection. Shot F. Oh, have a look at this. Have a look at this for a shot. Oh, wow. You don't see many better than that. 
Well, that shot that Ronnie played there was quite incredible. Shot J. Can he cut this in the middle pocket? Surely not. What a shot that was! <laughs> shot D. Important shot coming up here. What an effort this is. Look at the side he's got on that. What a shot that is! Well, if there was a shot at the championship, that's that's it for me. What a shot. What a talent. So not surprising that Luca Brissel has the honours, but to explain yourself, John, why oh, that one? That was unbelievable. Just try that one in your club, but please don't send me the bill from your chiropractor. <laughs> it's absolutely unbelievable. Most people would be throwing their arm everywhere. It's the <laughs> cue ball is unbelievable. And I hate to agree with Stephen Henry, but that had to be the best shot of the championship. Yep, OK. Well, he's won the start of the championship, but can he actually go on and win the title now? That is the big question. Uh, Steve, for you, if you would have been in his corner, what would you have been saying to Luca Brussel ahead of this closing session? Uh, just go out and enjoy it. There's no more you can say. There's nothing. There's nothing left to say. You know, he's done everything he could possibly do other than win the event. Now, yeah. he's played fantastic. Just go out, play the balls, and enjoy yourself. All right, so our 17-day marathon is almost at a close. The finish line looms large, but who will cross it? So 18 is the magic number needed to lift the trophy. It's currently 16-13 to the Belgian. And seeing us down the home straight, it's good evening to seven times world champion Stephen Hendry and Snooker Hall of Famer, John Virgo. Thank you, Hazel. Well, this is it. No more intervals. We now play to a finish. Who will pick up that silver lady? Stephen, I've got to ask, I mean, we know we, we can't criticise Luca because the way he's played so far in the tournament. Thank you, frame 30. A few shot Mark selections, Selby's questionable. Yeah, yes and no. I mean, I think if they go in, we're, 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 we're raving about the way he's playing. I think the interval has come at a good time for Luca. There's no doubt about it. But this pressure now... It's only got greater, and it's, it's something that he's never experienced before in his career. This is intense now. Well, that was much too thin. And Gray's in the second red, kindly, as it turned out.
Just a containing safety. I'd be very surprised if Luca Brassell now just nudged the red away from the black. The type of game that he's been playing, he wants the black in the open. Maybe a two red set as a plan to left middle, but I'm pretty certain Mark Selby <laughs> won't be interested in those that day. You see them. If he could get to the bottom of the cue ball, he'd be interested <coughs> because he'd be able to play position on the black. Touching ball. <coughs> See there, Luca, when he played his shot, he's trying to open reds up. He doesn't. He's not a containing safety player. He wants to get the frames going. <laughs> Cue ball not close to the cushion, so I think you'll find Luca screwing off these reds, trying to get the cue ball back to this black cushion. You've just got to be careful. You're not 100% sure where the reds are, are going to end up, and that's why he's not risking it. Yeah, Mark Selby looking at Luca. Yeah. Yeah. And Luca agrees. That was going nowhere. Re rack. Quite right. Yeah, that was going nowhere, Stephen. Yeah, there was an instance where Luca was, could have possibly played a more aggressive shot, but. I think even he realises now at the state of the match that he doesn't want to be gifting Mark Selby openings. He's got to be careful and got to be patient. Yeah, absolutely. Patience is a virtue and you're going to need it. It's the World Championship final. The final session. The final running. You cannot gift easy chances to your opponent. You know for a fact that Mark Selby won't be doing that. Does it give him the edge? We'll see. Frame 30. Mark Selby. To well, you, you would have to think that the, if this match gets closer and closer, you have to, I think, give a, a huge advantage to, to Mark Selby. Because even though Luca's a, a ranking tournament winner, in this place, and the final is pressure like you won't believe. Got the pot to the left corner. Had one in the last frame. Is it much too thin? That one, much too thick. And have we missed it? And the red running loose. To the left, something easier than this. I say easier because there is a possible pot to this right corner. <coughs> and he can just cue past the brown. Mark. 
trying to take the pressure off this shot to the right corner. Looking if he leaves the cue ball where he was pointing, he thinks the only way he can leave is the one he's playing. One. Solid pot, right in the heart of the pocket. Six. Mm, little shake of the head. Not perfect on this red. May have to try and play a little cannon and develop the blue here. Oh, can he squeeze past it? Well, he did squeeze Seven. past it, but any pace and you get the reaction off the cue ball, off the red, and he'd have flicked the blue. But that wasn't enough pace to get him good on the black. I think he can play this black slowly and get a half ball cannon on the red beside it. Leave it to the right corner pocket. Forty. Fifty. Just the one loose red available. Hasn't got a good angle to play for anything else, so that will be the choice. <coughs> Playing to him off the blue, Stephen. Yeah, most definitely. You can see the red is almost touching the pink. That's a good, a good splitter, that red. You get full contact on the pink. It's a little bit thinner on the blue than it would have been ideal, which means he's just got to keep an eye on the pot. Very easy to take your eye off it if you're concentrating on the cue ball. Could not have played it better. Where's the red going? Where's the red going? Sorry, John, stealing your lines. 28. Well, what a split. Hit the pink perfectly. That's why the cue ball held in the middle. This red was creeping towards the corner. You just get the sense 29. that Mark Selby is finding a gear at just the right time. That's why he's won this four times. Being able to play your best snooker at the business end when there's the most pressure. It's a, an ability that you can't teach. You've either got it or you haven't. And he's got it in spades. An area, a little bit short of where he wanted to be here. I think this red passes the red over the corner, but the red he's on, he can play for the pink. <coughs> yeah, he's only half a pocket. You won't want to risk that, as I say. With the angle he's got, he can play for pink. Thirty-seven. There could be a case here of potting the pink, playing for the red just below it and then playing a plant on the red over the corner. Looks unmissable. The 
The problem is with the red over the corner, obviously the pot, you can't, you can't miss. 43. But sometimes it's difficult to control the cue ball coming out of the jaws of the pocket. You can play for black or pink, but just got to be careful. And that's the problem. So it's a, a tough blue, not an easy black or pink, which he was looking for. So a little bit of pressure on this. Forty-nine. Once again, right in the heart of the pocket. The red that he's going to play to right corner. He can play a little cannon on the red to the left of it, which will leave him on either black or pink to left middle. I think there's too much angle just to, to drop it in, to roll it in. Played to screw across it and wow, 50. that's gone wrong. I'm surprised at that because you think if you're playing the screw, that other cannon is, is always on. Yeah, absolutely. No reason not to play your shot. It's gone horribly wrong and I think it's end of break. Find the ball cushion here, you feel. To not leave Luca a tempter to go at. Thank you. Mark Selby, 50. <laughs> Pretty good, but he has left this red. To right corner. Okay, it's fraught with danger. But it's a sort of pots that Luca's just been getting down and potting. Well, he's not even threatening the pockets at the moment with his long game. Oh. Worrying times for Luca Brazil. It really is. Yes. A few pots recently, one too thin, and then the last couple of attempts, much too thick. One. And I'll tell you, when you mark Selby, you love to see this. Your opponent looking under pressure. Missing balls that he was getting early on in the match by a long way. Just gives you a huge boost of confidence that perhaps your opponent is wilting as the pressure grows. Five. Six. This blue to go 61 points ahead. Just looking for one more red after the blue. You think, nice angle on the blue, the easiest one. We've been along, one along the top cushion. This red, no heroics, I wouldn't have thought, to go 62 points 11. in front with just 59 remaining. Twelve. <laughs> I think if you're Luca Purcell, you've got to somehow 
remind yourself you're still two frames in front if this frame is indeed gone but you feel that he needs to get in early in a frame with a, an easy opportunity round about the pink and black to get that cue action going again Eighteen. Got a pot on the pink and he's on this red, so no way back to the table for Luca Brassell. Nineteen. Mark Sell will be doing exactly what he had to do. Got in, make a good break, run out of position. And then didn't have to do much to get his second chance. And scoring. Twenty. That's the important thing. Yeah, Luca, worryingly, has not scored a point in the last two frames. 25. <laughs> He's relied on his long game, Luca, to get him in early in frames to score. And if that part of his game is deserting him, then he's in trouble in this match. 30. Thirty-one. Right, didn't really much about the pink. Look at Purcell stays in his seat. Mark Selby now just closes the difference to two frames, sixteen fourteen. The dream of a fifth world title is still very much on here. And if he were to complete this comeback and go all the way, he would move off that total, which he shares at the moment with John Higgins of four world titles, at the Crucible Theatre with only Steve Davis on six and those two record-equalling giants, O'Sullivan and Hendry, with seven, and they'll be looking in the mirror, I would imagine, the rear view mirror, <laughs> as this guy comes back, as indeed will Luca Brissell. He's, he's targeting a fifth world title in only 10 years. This is his backyard. How comfortable does he now appear to be in it? Um, I think he revels in this type of situation. He doesn't fear them, um, and he can sense the momentum has changed. Um, it feels like Luca's hit a bit of a brick wall, uh, and can Luca restart his engines? But I know full well that Mark will be fancying the job now. You can see it, like he's more focused in his chair. Can you sense it, John? Oh, absolutely. And, and you know, it's worth saying, by the way, he gets much maligned sometimes, Mark Selby. You'll be people coming in and going, oh, he plays slow and I can't watch him, and I've heard all this nonsense. He is the one of the, if not the greatest match player that has played this game. And what he shows on that table is absolute grit and determination and the ability to cope under pressure that most 31. people cannot do. He's two behind Luca this Brissell one. Luca Brissell, who has not potted a ball for 37 minutes. Good break off, and for once, he's not, leave, he's not leaving a pot on for Mark Selby. And isn't it always the way, Stephen? You start to play well and the ball starts to run for you. Yeah. It's, uh, and Luca, it, it's almost as soon as he's seen Mark Selby hit that thick, it's almost like you know what's going to happen. Screwing this cue ball in and out of bulk for the red in the middle of the table to the right corner. Five. Here you are, 
got it much too thick. But one in off the black. Good shot on the brown to give him this opportunity. Six. Red nearest the black does go to the opposite corner. Probably think about leaving himself low on it. So when potting this red, well, the angle he's got. Would you play this a control pace or would you give it a, a bit of a bang? I think you, you play this with pace, screwing the cue ball out of there. I just think the shape of the pack just lends itself for this shot. Yep, they were shaped perfectly. 14. Yep, and a lovely control of the cue ball. And definite signs. He's getting stronger. 21. Nice. Yeah, it's, it's almost like a different look. <laughs> And his eye at this stage is completely zoned in on what he has to do. Yeah, there was times in this, uh, well, today when I thought, well, he's, he's not hitting the ball well and he's struggling. And we always say, Stephen, when you're playing catch-up like this, you need a little bit of 20. help from your opponent. And I think he he spotted that. Yeah, you, you sense weakness. It's almost like yep. you can smell blood and you're going for it. You go over the throat of your opponent. It'll be... A tough ask, but it wouldn't surprise me. Mark Selby wins every single frame from here on in. Just the way the pattern of this match at the moment. He's getting stronger and stronger. These opponents showing weakness. Thank you. 30. So, nicely on the black. Maybe one, two reds loose that you could play on. So he's going to have to be going into the cluster pretty soon. Yeah, I agree with what you said in the last frame. I think Luca Brassel is looking for a chance. Hand on the table, nice easy Percy starter. Set. But Mark Selby will be aware of that. And he'll try to avoid that at all costs. He'll make him work for his chances. Thirty-eight. Good angle to go into them. There's the Selby camp. I bet they're feeling a lot better now. Lost the cue ball, didn't hit the pink full in the face. All he's left with now is a tough shot. Hit the pink, quarter ball, needed to catch it full. 
to hold a cue ball in the middle of the table. Certainly not on anything easy. Mark Selby, 43. Could have quite easily played a safety shot, taking the, the cue ball up to the near the bolt cushion, but doesn't want to even give Luca the slightest hint of a look at a long red. Decent length with the cue ball. Two reds that look like they may be close to a plant to the left corner, but in playing it, I'm not sure you can avoid the red that's to the right of the black. Yeah, they could easily be made, but does the cue ball, as I say, avoid that other red in its way back to the bulk end? Good line. Excellent length. Perfect. Much too thin. You'll be pleased with that outcome. That cue ball could have finished up anywhere. Yeah, not straightforward safety this. You can't go down the left hand side really because of the black, the red, the pink. You can't see him playing a pot. And if he's trying to get back to bolt with safety, you've got to catch this ultra thin. Now just a container. Couldn't risk going back to Bork. <laughs> Testing Luca Brussel's patience here. And that is the thing, Mark knows that he's going to take these on, and all of a sudden, every time Luca misses a shot like that, he's leaving Mark Selby in again. And just dictating the run of play, Stephen. Pure and simple. Yeah, he's, he's dominating the match now. Completely dominating it. He's imposing himself and his game on his opponent. One. Luca can't, well, he can't score a point. Can't get to the table. And when he does, it's a very difficult pot that he's got to do.
Yeah, we're on in the match, the two sessions today. Six. Luca was getting in a few times because Mark Selby was missing, missing Black off the spot. As I said uh, a little while ago, now everything seems to go right in the heart of the pocket. He's got to keep the belief as Luca Brussel that if he gets a chance, He's got to take it and believe he will. Yeah, and you, I think you're always looking at body language and he's just starting to look a little bit down 40. in his chair to me, Luca Brussel. As I said, you've got to try and... It's not, it's not easy. I appreciate that, but you've got to try and remind himself he's still 50. in front of this, in this match. But when you've not scored a point... And not potted a ball for however long, over 40 minutes. It's not easy. There you go, almost 50 minutes. Incredible. When you consider how he was playing, he was potting everything at one stage. 22. As I said, the way this is going, he's going to do well to get another frame on the board the way he's been dominated. can tell by the applause from this back to Civil Theatre. 30. Snooker's required again. Thirty-one. And that means that Luca Brussel will not be coming back to the table. He's getting no table time. And Mark Selby will be determined to keep it that way. 38. 39. <laughs> 44 <coughs> 52 And that clincher of 52 gets him within one. Worrying times for Luca Brussel. Worrying times indeed. We are about 51 minutes since Luca Brussel last made a pot in this final. Now he looks reasonably cool and collected in his chair there, but Mark Allen did this actually to Mark Selby in the semi-final. Do you remember Selby led 16-10? And it was Mark Allen who came back to win five in a row. This is exactly what's happened here in the final. And eventually it was Selby who got over the line, obviously, into this final. But we've seen this streaks of frames that Mark Selby himself is able to win. He's done it, Luca Brussel, but how difficult and dangerous to cope with. Well, he's not getting at any table time. When he's coming to the table, it's awkward. Uh, he's having to face long pots. Admittedly, he was knocking him in at the start of the match, but the pressure now is at its highest, and he's up against an absolute master who just can play. And what you're witnessing here, you cannot teach. This is totally from within. As a, as, as a snooker player yourself, this is something you can't teach. It isn't. We're going to find out what both of these guys are made of in the next possible four frames. We're at frame 32 of a possible 35. Are we going 16 each? Thank you, what frame 32. Mark Selby to break. Good 
Super Bowl. Possible pot. To the left corner, but I don't think Luca will be looking too invitingly on this. Much too thick again. And without having to work to force a mistake as he gives a wry smile, Mark Selby gets first chance in the frame once again. One. Good solid pot. A little bit closer to the cushion than he would have liked. <coughs> Gotta just dig in a little bit here. Well, we'll find out how Luca Brussels feeling. This is the opportunity he was looking for. In amongst the balls, nice, easy starter. Yeah, exactly what he wanted. Black. One. Play for the red. That's to the right of the bunch and to left middle and try and get an angle on the blue and just smash into the pink. Do what he's been doing the whole match. I always feel when you've been frozen out and you get the situation, if you're going to miss, it's going to happen in the first four or five shots. Once you get past that stage, you can find a little bit of a rhythm. So these first three or four pots are really important. Eight. This red is missable. He's not perfectly on it to left middle. But if he can pot it in, screw off the side cushion, angle in the blue. Nine. The angle is perfect. A full ball contact in the pink. This is what he's been doing the whole tournament. It's not bad. It's not bad at all. He's got a red to right middle. The black's in the open. A chance. 14. To reassert himself in this final. Well, that was beautifully struck. Choice of ball colours, but the red in the ball end, no problem with position. You wouldn't be playing for any other red than the one at the ball end. You can guarantee good position, and if you get good position on the red, you should have good position on the next colour. Seventeen. Eighteen. Nice on the blue. Uh, it's only going to be the situation you would think because these, when the balls have been in this position, he's. Basically, it's been end of frame. It's just been clearing up. 23. But the pressure out there is immense at the moment. Thank you. 24. Just 
got to be a little bit careful here. He doesn't snooker himself on the red above the black. Yeah, played it well. I'm not sure he was going to be low on it. 31. No, it's important he gets a good angle on the black here. These reds are sort of covering themselves. There's two reds in the middle of the table. OK, they may go to the left middle, but can he develop something? Possibly thought 32. there may have been a chance there just to rub off the two reds in line, but he didn't want to risk it. I don't blame him. Yeah, this could go wrong, this positional shot. But it hasn't. This is a huge hit to the table, I think, for Luca Brazil and his chances of winning this final. I think if he converts this chance, it's going to just give him a huge injection of confidence. There's a Brazil camp on the edge of the seats, as we all are. 40. The single red of the five in the middle of the table. If he's playing for it to the left corner, he's just got to be a little bit careful. He doesn't get into the cue ball too much and bring it too far down the table because he could easily snooker himself behind the two reds that are on the pink spot. Could bring the cue ball to the left side of the table if he chose, but he's played that shot and he's played it beautifully. Yeah, so far, so good. Can he right through the ball? Cueing nicely. Forty-four. Now then, what's the angle like on this black? Not great. Yeah, I thought I may have been tempted again to play a little cannon on the bottom red of those two, closest to the cue ball. I think it's a shot that a few frames ago he would have played just automatically. But you get to this stage and you try and just be very exact and very careful. He was running into the red, trusted to a bit of, little bit of luck. Hasn't had any. End of break. 51. Well, apart from this red on the left side of the table, but surely it's too risky. 50 point lead. Still 75 remaining. Nowhere near safe yet. Yeah, I mean, he almost wants to think what would Mark do in this situation? He wouldn't be taking a risk anyway, I know that. <laughs> be a containing safety shot of some kind. Yeah. Look at myself, 51. That'll do for now. <laughs> but he'd just be happy. OK, he wanted to win the frame, but he's potted some balls. He'll feel he's back in the final, back involved. Mark Selby comes to the table 50 points behind. He knows he can't <laughs> afford to give Luca Brazil next chance. If Luca gets it, that will be end of frame. So this is where the master tactician is normally at his best. There's always a chance you can double them across the table. 
Not the best cue ball, but safe. in the bump in the middle pocket. He's okay. He could have left a pot on. But I don't think he has. I think maybe the, the one closest to the black, the two reds and the pinks, but may pot. But can he avoid the red that's next to the black? Okay. What a pot. One. It's not out of the woods yet, though. Wow, what a shot the yellow would be, JV, to take on to this right corner pocket. Yeah, he'd have had no hesitation earlier on in this match. But that winning line's in sight. It's an easy snooker. He's even thinking of putting a port colour safe here. His choice. Green ball. So he's going to knock the green safe and get that cue ball to the ball cushion. Luca Vassell one. Yeah. I have to say that's the right shot. Thanks, Paul. Giving this plenty of thought. This red to the left of the black, but he's playing safe. If he catches it too thick, he could not one over the right corner here. He's got to catch this just right. Too thick. Knocks one towards the corner. Is he going to drop? Is he going to stay there? Well, would you believe it? One. He's fluked it. Wow. Wow. Is that destiny of this world championship? I wonder. Shots like that, the second fluke in two frames. Mm. Couldn't take advantage. Absolutely Couldn't take won. advantage. Oh, he looks up the balcony where his supporters are. What a miss. And a big stroke of luck. Okay. Well, that was One. a little bit tentative. Wrong side of the blue. Well, it just shows you how he's feeling. Didn't even want to drop the red in for the black to the same pocket. I'm sure the black goes. Stick is required. Six. What a relief for Luca Purcell after seeing Mark Selby fluke that red and land on the brown. We have 56 points to lead. Just 51 remaining. 
So two four-point snookers required, but with Mark Selby, you never feel safe. I'm just thinking, do you move the green and brown away? I know you want a colour safe, but the snookers required. That's a huge target for snookers. Do you want to move them now? Yeah, fair point. But I think, personally, I'd, I'd be just playing this safe as though Mark Selby could still win the frame. Don't give him an easy starter. Luca Brussel, six. Left a possible part, but difficult enough. Yeah, and Kubel going away from the high value colours as well. Even if you're staying for the blue, you've got to play this at a pretty slow pace. It's amazing, isn't it? The twists and turns prior to that mistake in this frame. I mean, never looked like missing. He was hitting the right in the heart of the pocket, but now it's as though he just lost a bit of that belief. Yeah, the black off a spot at the start of the frame was almost like a, it was like a shock to the system, wasn't it? That he missed it. He was putting everything. Clever shot from Luca. Well, I can only assume he's looking at this red along the top cushion. This is all or nothing. If he misses it and leaves it, frame over. He's missed it, and he's left it. A little hint of desperation there, Stephen. Yeah, as I say, I think that he was on such a roll. As I say, that black off a spot, it's, I think that's part of the reason he then missed the brown later on. Well, so look up, I'm gonna be Two frames up with a possible three to play to win this World Championship. Has he weathered the storm? Eight. 64 points to leave, 43 side. remaining. And, and Mark Selby stays in his seat. So Luca Bissell has halted the comeback. Mark Selby, Mr. Black off the spot, let him in. Now, one frame away from being world champion. The line is right there. Can he cross it at last? Mark Selby, Spade and White here. How do you, um, what do you make of the way the dynamic has changed in that last frame, John? It's funny, isn't it? He's been chasing all the way and he's just got right behind it within such a distance. And all of a sudden he's made a couple of misses. Mm. And this one on the black, I mean, it's not, it's not a gimme by a long stretch, but the way he was playing, I was expecting him to knock it in. He's, he's concentrating, I think, there on yeah. getting the perfect cannon on the red. Uh, you expected him to pot this brown because uh, after the fluke, this was a chance to get right back in the frame and uh, he'd have been distraught to have seen that gone astray. Just a shock for me that, that, that I thought he was going strong and I thought he was going to push at least to get parity. But every credit to Luca Brussel, whose arm must have felt like jelly not putting the ball for 51 minutes. <laughs> yeah. And at the first chance he came on, OK, it was a 50-something and he lost position, but that must feel fantastic when you've been frozen out for so long. He, he putted a couple of really difficult reds in the middle pocket to keep the break going, and yes, as you say, he didn't win it there and then, but I think he did enough to sort of get over the line. And um, if anybody had asked Luca Brussel at the start of this match against one of the greatest players who's ever graced the Crucible Theatre, would he have three cracks? at beating him, he'd have gone, yes, please. He's on the brink of beating one of the greatest players we've ever seen here. This has been one heck of a fight back from Mark Selby. He was 5-1 down in the first session. He fought back. He's made a maximum break. He got within one. 
This time he's won one, two, three, four, five in a row. But he's looking at what could be a second defeat in a world final. He was only 23 years of age back in 2007 when he got into his first final against John Higgins. Didn't win that one, has won four since then. Does he have anything left here, John? Oh, you bet you he's got plenty left. Don't worry about that. He's now got nowhere to go. That makes him very dangerous. For you, Steve? Yeah, uh, we, we're going to find out what Luke has made of because the finishing line is the tough one, the tough frame to win. But if he can keep his cue arm going and play without thinking too much about the situation, uh, you know, I think he can do it. How much credit does he deserve for being able to close that one out after not putting a ball for over 15 minutes, oh, John? Tremendous, as I say, you know, and his cue arm just felt like it wasn't his own. That was a brilliant frame to win. Thank you, frame 33. Here it is. Can he get Look it done? Good break off. But once again, not left a pot on. Or oh, nothing that would tempt Mark Selby. Just a touch too thick. That's why he's, well, just about getting near the bolt line rather than the bolt cushion. Not left a pot on, but you feel with Mark Selby, hand on the table, he's going to play a better one than that. I always think when you get to the situation, Lucas, and you've got three chances to win this final year, but I always think that the best chances normally come in this frame. And if you don't take them in this frame, then it, well, just becomes very twitchy. Weak safety shot there from Mark Selby. Catching the yellow, put no pressure on Luca at all. Ditto. <coughs> but that's what happens when you knock the bolt colours off the spots. I don't know whether Mark can find a way to get in behind them, but what a target that is now, yellow and brown. If you can find that area near the bolt cushion, I'm certain you're going to force a mistake from your opponent. As I say, whether he can do it this time or not is another matter. Yeah, just couldn't hit it thin enough to get in between, between the yellow and brown. Good shot, nevertheless. Good reply. And if Mark can't get safe down the left-hand side of the table as we look, he's in a spot of bother here. With that red being near the right-hand cushion, that's the danger ball if he catches the safety too thick. Well, he's looking to see if he can get through to this red 
near the top cushion. If he can, makes it a little bit easier. Oh, that tap on the table there means it's not guaranteed. First glance, we may have a couple of pots to go for, but I'm not seeing any way of getting on a colour. The red to left middle, can he play top spin on the red and pink that are touching? Maybe move the pink into a potable position? Not sure what the angle is. He'll know better than, than we do. I think that's his only play to try and create something. I mean, he could play the red that's portable to left middle. If he can't get in a colour, he could play off that one and try and get behind the yellow. But with a chance to win this championship, you want to take any pot on you can, really. Well, he has promoted the pink, and it's not bad, because it's a natural to get on any of the two reds that are near the black cushion. Always tricky though, playing into what we call a blind pocket. You see the cue ball, you see the object ball, but the pocket's not in your eye line. But it's there. Now, how's the position? He's okay, and that nudge on the black may have made the black available to the right corner. Seven. And when he pots this red, it'll certainly be available to the left corner. Next couple of shots, if they go right, big chance. Trying to get on the black to the same pocket. Brilliant shot. Eight. Well, those first two pots to the left middle were excellent and he's given himself a chance. He's two or three shots away from creating these reds into a straightforward opportunity, but they're not bad. A couple of little cannons like that, and you could soon open up. Now, where's the black going? It's all good. 15. It's all good. Sixteen. Well, it must be tough watching. Willing. Your friend. Your son. To fulfil his dream. 23. Of being world champion. The chance is here. Yeah, you would think the next shot be an angle in the black to play some sort of cannon. 24. Ideally, you'd like to miss the red that is directly above the black. Go into the next reds and screw the cue ball into the reds. He caught that red. Is he on one? He didn't want to hit that red that was directly above the black. But looking at his body language, he's walking around the table 31. with purpose. Well, worst way, he's got a cut to the left corner. But does the one just to the left of the pink spot go? It does. Right behind it, it'd be unmissable. I think if he pots it, he'll be on the black. He can follow through, miss the rod, the reds. Be on the black to the same pocket. It's there. Oh. Okay. So this is a chance now. 32. Can he play the little cannon into the four reds above the black? Doesn't have to play at pace. Even just the red on its own that's above the black would be good enough to leave something to right corner. What a chance he's given himself now. 
39. This is what you dream about, JV, as a player, isn't it? This sort of opportunity to win the World Championship. All the reds in the open, colours in the open. Yeah, he came here 11 years ago. The youngest player ever to play at the Crucible Theatre. 11 years. He's learned his trade. He's learned how to handle the pressure. All things you need to be a great champion. 40. Perfectly on the black. And this is when you need your cue ball control to be as good as it can be, to make every shot as easy as possible. Stun the cue ball up towards the pink spot here. Yeah, just leave a choice of reds to left corner. Forty-seven. Hard to see how it can go wrong, but there's so much at stake. A place in history. Belgium having a world champion, and I'm certain he's aware of all those things. Just got to keep clear of mind. Forty-eight. Once again, perfect on the black. Yeah, and this is what I was saying at the start of the frame. So often, when you get to the, the point of needing one more frame, then very next frame you get a guilt edge chance. 55. And if you don't take that, then it becomes very, very difficult. 56. It's hard to see where it can go wrong from here. 56 points the lead. Make that 62. <laughs> 62. 63. At this point in the break, when you're just two or three pots away from winning. It's strange because just in the background, backstage, you can start to hear people getting ready for you know, everything that happens when the final's over. And you've got to not pay attention to that. You've got to keep your concentration. 68. Snooker's required, but we know what Mark Selby's like with snooker's required, so just needs to dot the I's, cross the T's with a colour and one more red. I think we'll see a reaction if this pink goes in. He absolutely stayed down on the shot. What a performance. He's been like a breath of fresh air. He's lit up the tournament. 75. His performance against Mark Williams, against Ronnie O'Sullivan, and who will never forget that comeback against CGUE in the semi final. <laughs> Stephen, unbelievable. I'm so happy with him because he plays snooker the right way. He plays aggressively, 82. he goes for his shots. He's never ducked a shot the whole tournament. He's just trusted his game, and he's been good enough. 83. Well played, Luca Purcell. Well played indeed, and did it in style. 90. 91. And Mark Selby, I'm certain, will admit that over the four sessions, he deserves this. Four times champion, smile up at the balcony, saying, what can I do? Maybe a sign he looked like weakening, but then when he was given a chance with his hand on the table, 97. we saw then that he's plenty of heart. And just this pink 98. to add the icing on the cake. Unbelievable! What a performance from Luca Brazil!
five. From mainland Europe, the first ever winner of the World Championship. He's excited. Where's the cue ball going? Perfect on the yellow. That's where. 112. He's in safe hands with the likes of Luca Brussel, who is the Kazoo World Snooker Champion 2023. Well played! what it's like to be a champion. You are a true champion. You threw everything at Luca, not just today, but yesterday as well. My goodness, it is fantastic to see you back, Mark Selby. You gave it everything, Mark. But how tough did he make it and how much admiration for his achievement do you have? Yeah, you know, I mean, firstly, congratulations to Luca. You know, he's a great, great talent, great lad. Obviously, lovely family. I uh, wish him all the best and enjoy the year. You deserve it, mate. You play fantastic. Mark. Ladies and gentlemen, this, this man here has given us a moment in sporting history that none of us will ever forget. Mm -hmm. That maximum last night, and I wonder what kind of consolation that was for you, Mark. Yeah, you know, obviously it's, it's, great, to make a, it's great to make a 147 at the Crucible, something obviously was what I was wanting to do. Never thought I'd do it in a final, you know. Uh, that's an amazing achievement. The atmosphere last night when I made it was something I'll, I'll remember for the rest of my life. But, you know, it's not about me today. It's about Luke. You played fantastic over the, over the two days, you know. I mean, every time he got a chance... Every time he got a chance, he looked like he was going to win the frame in one visit. And, uh, yeah, you know, I kept breaking off, leaving him the shot to nothing. And apart from when I got back to 16-15, I think that's probably the first time he missed it. But... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, like I say, every time we potted a ball, I fancied him to clear the frame up in, in one visit. It was, uh, it was tough, you know, but I battled and gave it everything. Got back to 16-15, had a smelly black where I was pushing into the red. If I pot that, I felt comfortable at that time. Uh, and who knows, if I get back to 16, then it could be a different scoreline. But, uh, you know, every credit to Luke, he deserves it. Yes. And, Mark, this has been a tough time for you and the family over the last few months, but what an absolute joy to see you playing with a smile on your face again. How special is it to be back in this arena where you belong? Oh, amazing. You know, like I say, 12 months ago, it was just nice to come back and just play and just try and enjoy it. But uh, from where I've been to where I am now, yeah, you know, I've enjoyed the last two weeks. Yeah, it didn't finish how I wanted it to, but... You know, with things going on off the table as well, not just with me, but with, with Vicky as well, you know, obviously it realises that health's more important. So at the end of the day, it's a game, but a game that you want to win, but if you don't, it's not the end of the world. Well said. Chester, you are back. Thank you so much, Mark. Well done. <laughs> Luca Brissell, you have waited your whole life for someone to say to you, you are the world champion. How does that sound? <laughs> It's amazing. Uh, I can't see anymore. I don't know why. Uh, <laughs> I think there are a few tears in those eyes. How yeah. tough did he make it for you? Yeah, so tough. He's, he's the worst opponent to have in the final, I think. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, he just keeps coming back and he's a, such a fighter. And uh, when it was 16 15, um, I didn't fancy winning at all, to be honest. <laughs> I was missing balls by a mile. And um, yeah, I don't know how I did it. I made a good break in the last frame. Um, 
once it got to 17, I, I fancied if I got a chance to, to clear up, which I did. And um, yeah, great feeling. You know, you came here as a 17 year old. You're just a young man. Boy to man, we've seen you at this championship. It's taken you 11 years to get over the first round hurdle. I think you're getting the hang of it now. <laughs> <laughs> but what took you so long and what changed this time, Luca? Nothing changed. You, you know, snooker is a difficult sport and in the first round I could have lost to Ricky Walden. I beat him 10-9. So if I would have lost that game, then everyone would be saying, oh, he's lost again, first round. <laughs> and now I'm the winner. So that's, that's uh, the small margins in snooker. It's crazy. And, uh, yeah, I still can't believe it. You do things with class and with swagger and with real verve. We've loved the Lucas Snooker that you've been playing, haven't we, ladies and gentlemen? We sure have. But in terms... <laughs> but, Luca, I know there is Team Brussel around you. How much have they given you, not just here, but all of these years that you've been the next big thing in snooker? Yeah, unbelievable. I, I really have the best team. Best friends, best parents, best girlfriend in the world. Um, which makes me strong on the table. <laughs> that was my friend. <laughs> yeah, and it makes you so strong, you know. If you don't have that team, then it's very difficult to play your best game. And, um, yeah, it's fantastic. And I just want to say um, to Mark and Vicky, I just want to say stay strong, because I've heard some news. And uh, I don't know if I should, if I should say it, but I just want to say stay strong, Vicky. The Selby family is the strongest family I know. Very well said. And it's a mark of the respect that you have for Mark and for his family. And I think the respect that we all hold you in, that you've been able to say that. But I have to say, you do things your way, Luca. You've partied in the build-up to this championship <laughs> and right through it. So is it back to the practice table tomorrow? Definitely. No. <laughs> um, no, I won't practice, obviously, for a couple of weeks and months. I'm just going to enjoy this and... Um, yeah, it's been a crazy week, as you say, no practice, just partying. Um, it's, yeah, it shouldn't be legal. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a formula that's brought you success. Quick word for what might be happening back in Belgium and all over continental Europe. This is a huge moment for sport in your country. Yeah, it's going to explode. And um, I was so nervous because I just wanted it to happen for Belgium and for Europe. And now it has happened, so I can't wait to see what it brings uh, to the world. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just so happy. I don't know how I did it, but I'm so happy. Luca Brussel, you are a joy and you are our champion. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome your presentation party, Paul Whitehead, Chief Executive Officer of Kazoo, and Barry Hearn, President of the World Snooker Tour. The runner-up receiving a cheque for £200,000 and the silver medal. What a fortnight and what an effort by Mark Selby. <laughs> and the winner receiving a cheque for half a million pounds, the trophy and the title, 2023 Kazoo World Snooker Champion for Belgium, for his family, Luca Bracel. From boy to man, tonight he comes of age, surrounded by his family, his girlfriend and his mum, Marilla, his dad, Carlo. Only the fourth non-UK player ever to win here at the Crucible. It's a first Triple Crown major title for this man. 
And Stephen John, how many more are playing like that might well, he do? He's been a breath of fresh air, that's absolutely sure, through this championship. He's made the final what it was. I, I think the quarter-finals said it for me. When he beat Mark Williams here, I thought, you've got a chance of winning this because he played so well in that. And he's carried on, obviously, and gone right through and won it and played brilliantly. But it's the way he plays. It's a refreshing thing to watch. He goes for his shots. He doesn't care if he misses, but he pots more than he, you know, he's entitled to. And he's stuck with that game plan. He's, he's had so much self-assurance and belief in his own style of play. And that's what's carried him through here, Steve. Yeah, and delighted for his family as well. They, yeah, his father, I've known for, we've all known for many years, has been sort of long-suffering over the years <laughs> with you know, his son playing perhaps a type of snooker that was too open and everybody saying he should change. They resisted the temptation to sort of do what people told him to do. They stuck to their guns, stayed in Belgium. Uh, so I'm delighted for them all. It's, it's great to see somebody play swashbuckling snooker mm. but with balance as well and push the game to perhaps even more new limits than we even thought possible. We were talking about Mark's character this evening but how much did he show? Mm. I mean the, the, to get over the line there he said himself where did he find that from? Well that's what champions do. I thought he was brilliant but he got his chance Mark missed those couple of pots and he took the frame and then in the last frame to finish like he did with the century sign of a champion. Indeed, he was world number 10 coming in here. He's vaulted up the world rankings now to number two. He'll start the season as world number two. And uh, interestingly, I was talking to Sean Murphy earlier on. He said, I'm just going to go for everything now. Do you think it's going to change? <laughs> There's no change the there, then. <laughs> but do you think this more attacking brand of snooker is something that we've seen succeed so well yeah. with Luca? Is it going to change the way others attack the game from here on in? It should do. Uh, young players uh, will, will We'll be, we'll be looking at that and going, that's the way to play, that's the way to win, that's the new game to play. Don't hang around, don't study up on every shot. See the shot, go for it, trust your first instincts. And this is the first player, who's, I think, well, there's, there's a few others, but he's the first player who's absolutely led from the front relentlessly. So it could actually make a difference change-wise. We've seen Seizure and Weir do, do, do very similar. Mm. Maybe it's the, the old style is slightly, ever so slightly changing. Indeed. And I think it was significant that it was Luca that seemed to bring out the best in Mark Selby as well. We know that Mark is a granite player, but he's a hugely entertaining player mm. when he opens up the way he did. Yeah. And who will ever forget that 1-4-7? No, he's had an unbelievable week. He's played great. He's had some titanic matches to get where he's got to, put a lot of effort in to get there. You know, and you never ever give up, up, up on him because you always think he's going to come back. But he was beaten by the better player in the final, as to be said. It's the best I've ever seen Luca Brussel play. And it's funny, the shot selection we go on about and the way he plays the game, the one thing you need with it is an inordinate amount of talent, and he's got every bit of that. He has, and he mentioned it himself, the impact and the profile of this sport in Europe now, in continental Europe, because that is a really huge market potentially, as we've seen, not just in Germany, but in Belgium and in Holland and the Netherlands, all over the place. There's so many budding players going to break through. Yes, let's hope that does uh, wonders for sort of Belgian snooker and obviously I think anybody knowing it, it's possible. But do you know what's amazing? How many people have stayed in the room to watch? The, the, the respect he's got in this room is amazing. Well, he's been fully entertaining. The people who've bought the tickets, honestly, they're hard-earned money. They got every bit of, you know, value from it over the last three, three, two or three days because that final was, as I say, the first couple of sessions in it and tonight, some of the best I've seen. It was just wonderful entertainment. Well, he's shown the way on the table. Do you think he's going to show the way off the table? Um, will he practice before major Triple Crown events ever again, do you reckon? <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, there's people now everywhere saying, uh, I'm off to the pub, darling, I've had 17 minutes practice. Uh, I'm going to play darts, and that's my preparation for the next championship. It's not a formula I think will work for everyone, but he's just been so refreshing in the way he's done it his way. Yeah, to come back in the semi-final was incredible. To withstand Mark Selby was, was amazing. He, he is a total breath of fresh air. Uh, where could, can he win it again? Where does he go from here? Mm. Does he play even better next season? What do you think? I don't know, but I don't want pictures of the party. <laughs> that's for sure. <laughs> I mean, if he's partying before he's won the World Champions, I know he's going to look like when it's finished. <laughs> well, gentlemen, I can only thank you and the rest of our amazing team, and I can thank you at home for being with us for the most unbelievable 17 days. It's been fantastic. Sum it up in one word if you can, John. Oh, just mesmerising. For you? Astonishing. I think joyous. I think one of the yes. most joyous, exciting mm. championships we have ever had. And I think it's fair to say that um, 
La Vida Luca might be oh. the way forward after this <laughs> from us all here in Sheffield. What a great 17 days it's been. And thank you for being with us to share in all of it. Bye-bye for now.